Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight Matthew Henson, the African American explorer. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. An African American of the first generation to roam the world after the abolition of slavery, Matthew Henson led a singular life of exploration and discovery that would usher in the modern era of adventure that continues now through the 21st century. Orphaned at a very young age, Henson made his own way in life with uncommon courage and tenacity to become the first human being to set foot on the North Pole. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring Matthew Henson, explorer of the North Pole. So without further ado, let's get started. 1. Matthew Alexander Henson was born on August 8, 1866 in Maryland. Matthew Alexander Henson was born on August 8, 1866 to a family of sharecroppers on a farm east of the Potomac River in Charles County, Maryland. His father, Lemuel Henson, and his mother had been free people of color before the American Civil War. In order to escape racial violence by the Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacist groups in Southern Maryland, the Hensons sold their farm and moved to Georgetown in 1867. After Matthew Henson's mother died when he was only seven, his father remarried a woman named Caroline, with whom he had other children. Two, Henson became an orphan after his father died and moved to Washington, D.C. Shortly after his father, Lemuel Henson, died, the orphaned Henson was sent to live with his uncle, who lived in Washington, D.C. Henson's uncle then sponsored young Matthew's education for a while, but soon died as well. Following his uncle's demise, Henson then enrolled in a black public school for the next six years, during the last of which he worked as a dishwasher in a restaurant for the summer. Despite being a very young orphan, Henson continued to work and live with uncommon bravery and tenacity. 3. Henson was very motivated by a Frederick Douglass speech. Henson's early years were greatly shaped by one remarkable event. The 10-year-old boy attended a ceremony honoring Abraham Lincoln, the American president who issued the proclamation for the emancipation of slaves in the occupied Confederate states in 1863. At the ceremony, young Matthew was captivated and immensely inspired by a speech given by Frederick Douglass, a renowned orator and an influential icon in the American black community. In his speech, Frederick Douglass challenged people of color to vigorously pursue educational opportunities and battle racial discrimination. Four, Henson relocated to Washington, D.C., where he met Commander Perry. When he turned 12, Matthew Henson moved to Baltimore, Maryland, a busy port where he worked as a cabin boy on the Katie Hines, a three-masted merchant ship traveling to ports in Africa, Asia, and the Russian Arctic Seas. Soon, the 12-year-old Henson became a protege under the ship's leader, Captain Childs, who taught him to read and write. For the next six years under the mentorship of Childs, Henson not only received an education, but he learned a variety of technical skills and developed into a competent sailor. Upon Captain Child's demise, Henson returned to Washington and worked as a sales clerk at clothing store B.H. Steinmetz & Sons, where he met Commander Robert E. Perry in November 1887. Learning of Henson's experience at sea, Commander Perry subsequently recruited him as a personal valet for his planned journey and surveying expedition in Nicaragua. Impressed with Henson's seamanship on that voyage, Perry subsequently hired him as a colleague, and Henson then became first man in his expeditions. For more than 20 years, their expeditions were to the Arctic. Henson traded with the Inuit, the indigenous inhabitants of Greenland, and mastered their language. 5. Henson and Perry began their Arctic expeditions in 1891. Upon their return from the Nicaragua expedition, Perry helped Henson to get a messenger position at the League Island Naval Yard in Philadelphia. Later in 1891, Perry once again invited Henson to join his party to explore the Arctic and embark on the complete mapping of the Greenland ice cap. 
During two expeditions in 1896 and 1897, they discovered three massive meteor fragments, which they sold to the American Museum of Natural History in New York for $40,000. Also known by its Inuit name, Agnihito, which means the tent, the largest piece of their collection is called the Cape York Meteorite, a 31 metric ton iron rock which remains the third largest intact meteor ever discovered and the heaviest ever transported by human beings. During their expeditions, Henson traded with the Inuit people and mastered their language. A skilled craftsman and proactive problem solver, Henson was known for being the only non-Inuit who mastered driving the dog sleds and in training dog teams in the Inuit way. Henson's handyman skills made him an essential part of the team in the harsh Arctic conditions, as they learned to build igloos from mobile housing with snow as they traveled. Six, Henson was actively involved in Perry's eighth attempt to reach the North Pole. On September 5, 1908, the group arrived at their starting point at Cape Sheridan. The expedition was a large one, and Perry planned to use his system of setting up cash supplies of meat that included musox, deer, and rabbit along the way. In February 1909, Perry led the party by sledge to Cape Columbia, where he established a forward base camp on the ice. The expedition began in earnest, as Henson led the first group of sledges toward the pole on March 1, 1909, and for the next five weeks the teams continued to advance on their mission. When Perry and Henson boarded his ship Roosevelt, leaving Greenland on August 18, 1909, their team comprised four Inuit groups as part of the six-man team who would make the final run to the pole. Before the goal was reached, Perry could no longer continue on foot and rode in a dog sled, so he sent Henson ahead as a scout. Both Henson's and Perry's teams covered thousands of miles in dog sleds and ultimately reached the farthest north point of any Arctic expedition until 1909. 7. Henson planted the American flag over the center of the Earth on April 6, 1909. Despite many controversies and counterclaims about who first reached the farthest north, for many years, several accounts point to the fact that the first person to stand on top of the world was actually Matthew Henson. In a newspaper interview, Henson later confirmed that he went ahead to plant the American flag over the geographical center of the Earth, which was located just behind their igloos. However, the National Geographic Society and the Naval Affairs Subcommittee of the U.S. House of Representatives both credited Perry's team as the first to reach the North Pole. Upon their return to the United States, there were reports in the press signifying that there was some sort of tension between Perry and Henson as to which of them actually deserved credit for reaching the North Pole first. 8. Henson married Eva Flint in 1891 and Lucy Ross in 1907. Henson's first marriage to Eva Flint in 1891 ended in a divorce in 1897 due to their long periods of separation. Ten years later, precisely on September 7, 1907, he later married Lucy Ross in New York City, but the marriage produced no children. However, during the Greenland expeditions, Henson and Perry both fathered children with the Inuit women they took as country wives. Henson had his only son named Anna Uakak, born in 1906 with his Inuit country wife. In 1986, learning of possible descendants of the American explorers S. Allen Counter, a neuroscientist and director of the Harvard Foundation, visited Greenland and tracked down Henson's and Perry's sons, Anna Uakak and Callie, who were then more than 80 years old. Dr. Counter facilitated a visit for Anna Uakak and Callie in 1987 to the United States, where they met their American relatives and also visited their father's graves. Anna Uakak died in 1987 and had five sons and a daughter with his wife, Aviak. Here is a fun fact. Matthew is a brother to actress Taraji P. Henson's great-great-grandfather. 9. Henson authored an autobiography in 1947 to shed light on his life story. In 1909, upon his return from the pole, Henson was honored at dinners within the black community, but he was largely ignored as he spent the ensuing decades in relative seclusion, as only Admiral Perry was recognized and honored for leading the expedition to the pole. 
1912, Matthew Henson published A Negro Explorer at the North Pole, a memoir about his Arctic explorations in which he described himself as a general assistant, skilled craftsperson, interpreter, and laborer. Henson worked as a clerk for the next 30 years in the U.S. Customs House in New York on the recommendation of Theodore Roosevelt. He later worked with author Bradley Robinson on his biography, Dark Companion, published in 1947, which shed more light on the story of his life. 10. Henson was admitted as a member to the Explorers Club in New York City in 1937. In 1937, Henson was admitted as a member to the prestigious Explorers Club in New York City and made an honorary member in 1948. In 1944, Congress awarded him and five other Perry assistance duplicates of the Perry Polar Expedition Medal, a silver medal received by Perry. Henson died on March 9, 1955, at the age of 88. He was initially buried at Wood Lawn Cemetery and survived by his wife Lucy. After Lucy's death in 1968, she was buried with him, but on April 6, 1988, his remains, along with his wife's, were relocated to Arlington National Cemetery. On the 79th anniversary of his arrival at the North Pole, Henson was laid to rest with full military honors near the monument to Robert Perry. In 1996, an oceanographic survey ship was named after Henson. In 2000, the National Geographic Society honored Henson posthumously with the Hubbard Medal, the Society's most prestigious award. The monument on Henson's gravesite features an inset bronze plaque commemorating the North Pole discovery. At the top sits a large bust of Henson in Arctic gear. Immediately below, an inscription describes his part in reaching the North Pole. Globes of the world, tilted with the pole in view, sit at either side. The central image, based on a photograph that Perry took at the pole on April 6, 1909, shows Henson flanked by the four Inuit assistants who accompanied the trip. The U.S. flag flies behind them atop a mound of ice. The bottom panel, depicting dog sleds and dramatic ice flows, suggests the struggle that Henson, Perry, and the Inuit sustained over many years to achieve their goal. On the opposite side, an inscription quotes Henson's book, A Negro Explorer at the North Pole. The lure of the Arctic is tugging at my heart. To me, the trail is calling, the old trail, the trail that is always new. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.